G'day mates, Austin John Place here, and today we're going to be talking about being the thief in Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch. You may be asking about my strange Australian accent. Well, my strange Australian accent is because for several days of the year that there's an international release of a game, I'm an Australian citizen. Don't believe me? Look at the way my toilet flushes. And just to not throw you off, I'm gonna go back to my American accent now, that way it's not as uh, off-putting, you're fine. So great, whether you're picking up Link's Awakening today, or today in a different time zone, or tomorrow, or a year from now, that's fine. As soon as you start the game, there's one very important choice you need to make. Are you a thief? The reason I ask that is because when playing this game, there's going to be many opportunities that you need to purchase some very expensive items from the shop. And the reason I'm making this video before the, um, the American audience gets the game is because you need to know this before you play. As soon as you start up the game, you're gonna notice that, boom, there's a shovel that costs 200 rupees. If I were to walk into Home Depot or the Australian equivalent of that and see a shovel for 200 rupees, I'd take that shovel and hit someone with it. And piece of art's 200 rupees, that's actually a very fair price. Now, as you can see, I have 42 rupees. I, I'm a poor boy. You have an option here. And the option is you can steal things. There are consequences to your actions, unlike other video games. If I were to take this and I would just go walk out the door, this guy's all like, hey, stop, you gotta pay, put it back. And rightfully so, because I'm trying to steal it. If you do steal an item, two things happen. One, you get the item for free, which is nice. However, you're banned from that shop. If you were to go back into a store that the guy knew that you stole from him, there would be consequences to your actions. And Link's Awakening is no different. And secondly, if you're caught as a thief, you'll be labeled as a thief. And I'm gonna be getting into the details of that in just a second here. Which if you do want to steal from this man, which I do not recommend that you do, you need to be a little crafty about it. Because if he faces in this direction, or this direction, or anything over here, he will see you walk out. So you need to leave while he's not looking, which is actually a little bit harder than it sounds. I've found that the best way to do it is to come over here to the right side and find the very small area that if you were to face down, he looks down, face up, he looks up. And you'll notice that he moves sort of on his own timer. You could also be right up against him, and the closer you are to him, the less you actually have to travel. Down. Up. There we go. You walk out and says, guess what? You got it for free. Are you proud of yourself? Well, fantastic. We just got ourselves a piece of heart. As you can see right here in the top left, I have two. I got one in the crane game, and then I got one here. Now, if we were to go back inside of this shop, we have to face the consequences. But before we head back into that shop, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna save my game. Right underneath your hearts meter is a little picture of a gravestone, and it says zero. I'm gonna go ahead and save my game. And we walk into the shop, the store owner is on top of the desk, all of the items are missing, and the shopkeeper says, I wasn't kidding when I say pay, now you'll pay the ultimate price with your life. I'm actually not joking, he kills you. Your hearts go all the way down, and Link dies, and you get a game over screen. Now if you to save and quit, you would save your game. If you were to retry, that means that would put you back in the same world, but either of these options give you a death count. What I mean by that is if I were to go to save my game right here, you see that I have a death count of one. Every time that you steal and you go back into the shop, you'll automatically get that death count. And why is zero deaths so important? Well, one, you're not a real gamer if you die. PewDiePie taught me that. But two, Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch actually has a secret ending that requires you to have zero deaths at the end of the game. You have to make your way all the way through to the very end of the game, never dying once. And then, once you get to the final, final boss, and you defeat the final boss in the end credit screen, there's going to be a different end credit screen. 
Now, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but I will say it's not very different. Like Breath of the Wild had a significant ending if you did all the Divine Beasts. This is not that significant, I guarantee you. Now, the problem with being a thief is that, well, everyone knows you're a thief. And every single time that you're going to be addressed as your name, as you can see right here, I have my name set as Austin. Instead of calling me Austin, they'll call me Thief, including during cutscenes. And the windfish at the very end of the game calls me Thief. So I don't think you want that title. Now let's talk about the benefits of being a thief. Obviously, the greatest benefit of being a thief is you don't have to pay for things. After you commit this once, you could come in here and just run next to the shopkeeper. You see this $200 shovel that's severely overpriced? Well, let him know how severely overpriced it is by just walking out with it. That's fine. And boom, now I have a shovel and I can do all my shovely duties. Everything that I need a shovel for, I have a shovel. But if you go inside, again, you have to face the consequences. Now there may be a point in the game that there's going to be some expensive items, like a bow and arrow. Hey look, it's a bow and arrow. It costs 980 rupees. Maybe if you're a sucker, it costs 980 rupees. This should not be easy. This does require some practice, some patience, and the game makes it so it's not easy to be a thief. For the record, I've been trying to steal this bow and arrow for like two minutes now. I can't wait to see speedrunners come in here and steal this bow and arrow in an amount of time that puts every single one of us to shame. Cause there's gonna be them. There's gonna be people who like, enter and know exactly what frame to walk out on, it's gonna be ridiculous. There we go. Guess what, you got it for free. You're damn right I did, I just got a thousand dollar bow and arrow for free. It's not a good idea to, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit the fox. It's not a good idea to, uh, to let thieves steal, uh, weapons, that's for sure. I'm at the very beginning of the game and I have the bow and arrow, so... There are advantages to being a thief. So my advice to you is to not be a thief and to grind some rupees. You can come right down here to the crane game. It costs 10 rupees to play. You can win 50 rupees. It takes 45 seconds, so every 45 seconds you get 40 rupees, which is great. I'm gonna have an entire video on rupee farming, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for that. So just to recap, grind the rupees, buy the things properly. At the very, very end of the game, once you beat the final boss and wake the windfish, which is the overall objective of the game. There are still more items that you could buy in the shop and they're very expensive. They're over a thousand rupees each. If you want to do post game grinding, then yeah, go for it. But after you defeat the final boss, wake the windfish and you get the secret ending, then I would say go ahead and just steal the rest of the items from the shop because it doesn't matter if you have a death. Plus on your save screen, you can just save your zero death, that you beat the game with zero deaths, and then you can have your 100% with your deaths. Now what would be impressive is the 100% with all those super expensive items with zero deaths. That would be impressive. Anyways guys, I'm wrapping up this video. I have about 26 more videos coming out for Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch over the course of the next two to three weeks. Pick up the game, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, we're gonna have a great time together. I have a whole bunch of tips and tricks and strategies. If you found this video helpful or informative, do me a favor to leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. And tomorrow, we're gonna be doing our drawing for a copy of Link's Awakening and a Switch Lite. In order to enter, you have to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment including the word Link on this video. I'm gonna be looking at this video as well as all my other Link's Awakening videos and choose one winner from those videos. Guys, thank you so much for checking this out. Until next time, Austin John out.